All right, so here's a couple of examples for lesson 4.3 that where the numbers weren't quite as nice as the ones we did previously. So here it says determine whether each value of x is a zero for f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 16. So first of all, we're gonna see if i is a zero. So let's go ahead and set this up using synthetic division. And let's bring down our one. Of course, one times i is i. Now remember, um, imaginary numbers with an i in them, they have a real part and an imaginary part. Negative four plus i, the way we would write that is just like what I just said, negative four plus i. We do the real part first, then the imaginary part. So notice our next step is to multiply i times negative 4 plus i. By the way, you'll notice I made some extra space between my numbers here. If you didn't do that, you might want to do that because you're going to need more room than normal. So now we're multiplying i times negative 4 plus i. I'm going to do the work down below. You get negative 4i plus i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is negative one minus four i. Remember to put the real part first and then the imaginary part. So that goes up here. So when we add, we'll add our real part, four and negative one, we get three. So we'll get three minus four i. So next step is to multiply. We gotta multiply i times three minus four i. So again, I'll do this work down below. <coughs> Excuse me. You get 3i minus 4i squared, but remember i squared is negative 1. So a negative 4 times negative 1, that's 4. We'll get 4 plus 3i. And then when we add 16, we're going to get negative 12 plus 3i. So we didn't get a remainder of zeros, so the answer here is no. Let's go ahead and try part b. Now again, I would encourage you to try it on your own, and then you can check the video. All right, so we're gonna check to see if negative two i is a zero. So drop your one. When you multiply, you get negative two i. When we add here, we get negative four minus two i. So we've gotta multiply negative two i times negative four minus two i. We're gonna get negative eight i plus four i squared. But don't forget i squared is negative one. So we'll have negative four plus eight i. Well, that works out kind of nice because the four and the minus four is zero and you're left with just eight i. So let's multiply negative two i times eight i. You get negative 16 i squared, but i squared is negative one. So this is gonna be a positive 16. And so notice here, you do get a remainder of zero so the answer here is yes. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, so here's our problem. Determine whether each value of x is a zero for f of x equals x cubed minus seven halves x squared plus x minus three halves. So first we're gonna check negative three. Now, one thing I just wanted to say here is, especially as you go into higher level math, you're gonna run into fractions, and the better you are with fractions, the better off you'll be. But on the other hand, if you're struggling mighty, mightily with the fractions, um, you, you, you need to make sure you know how to use the graphing calculator to do the fractions. So when I create a video where we do some graphing, I'll also do a little bit of work with fractions just as a reminder if you don't remember how to do that. Okay, so let's see. To set this one up, it's going to look like that. We'll drop the 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So we have to add negative 7 halves and negative 3. So we're going to need to get a common denominator of 2 here. Basically, we're multiplying by two in the denominator to get the two we need. So we gotta multiply the numerator by two. 
you end up getting negative 7 halves minus 6 halves, which is negative 13 halves. So next we're going to multiply negative 3 times negative 13 halves. When we multiply, we multiply across numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So here we'll get 39 over 2. So 1 plus 39 over 2. Let's see, again, I need a common denominator of 2. Well, 1 is 2 over 2, and we get 41 halves. Well, by the way, at this point, you probably can see you're not going to get 0. But if you multiply across, you get negative 123 over 2. And <laughs> we're definitely not going to get 0 there. So when we add here, you end up getting negative 63. So the answer is definitely no. So I would encourage you to try to do part B. And, uh, and let's see how you do. All right, so you should have set it up like that. We'll drop the 1. Of course, 1 times a half is a half. So we need to, now we have a common denominator here. We have a negative 7 and a plus 1. This is going to be negative 6 halves, which is negative 3. Now negative 3 times a half will be 1 half times negative 3 over 1, which is negative 3 halves. Now we've got to add that to 1. 1 is 2 over 2. So now we have a common denominator and we get negative a half. So next we multiply, we're going to get negative a fourth. And finally, again, you can see we're not going to get 0 here. But if you do the work here, you do find that you get negative 7 fourths. And again, since we didn't get a remainder of 0, the answer is no. All right, and that's it for this video.